Hey, what's going on y'all? Welcome to Meat Cranium. Today, I've got questions. Can you do this on the Bronco? I've had other questions of how they work on ceramic grills and all these other kind of grills. Well, I don't know that because I don't have those. Anyhow, I can tell you, because I have a Bronco, how it does on a Bronco. I don't know if I'm the first one to try it on the Bronco, but today I'm gonna to try this on the Bronco. And I'll be doing just a, a set of some St. Louis ribs with some Carib, Carib, I always, I've used this before, I screw up the name every time. Carib, Caribbeq, it's a pork and poultry rub, honey heat. It's gonna be pretty good, I've used it before, really good. These ribs, I got them last night, they were kind of frozen, but that's how I wanted them. I wanna see how long it takes to kind of do ribs from frozen or partially frozen to their a perfect rib. I'm gonna try to go no wrap on these ribs today, and I'm gonna be spritzing with a Dr. Pepper. If I do have to wrap, it's gonna be probably uh, if they start getting a little bit too dark, I will wrap and it's gonna be in some butcher paper. Anyhow, I'll be spritzing with some Dr. Pepper. You're probably already saying, well, the sugar in a Dr. Pepper is going to burn. Well, that's why I'm gonna try to keep these temperatures kind of low today. I'll try maybe around the 225, 250 area. This is how I'm gonna get these ribs set up. Okay, I'm leaving a, a membrane on today because I'm gonna be hanging them up. I'm gonna be uh, actually daisy chaining these like this, okay? They're already wet from being uh, frozen, so I'm gonna go ahead and just get the rub on. First time I've ever done frozen ribs. I mean, I've done them from frozen, but they're totally thawed out. This right here is uh, gonna be frozen when I put them on. All right, so right here, gonna go uh, bone here, bone here. Time measure first. There I go, right there. Let's get these things on. Okay, so right now the temp is about 210, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this down a quarter way. Right there. And the uh, tip top temp over there is completely open. All right, and then it's going to adjust the uh, temp from here on out. And uh, then if it starts getting a little over uh, 250, I'll just turn that knob back a little bit and I'll close it, then make incremental adjustments. Last week on the Oklahoma Joe Highland Smoker, I only had to make two adjustments the entire cook. You see an even 250. I want this a little bit lower, about 225, no more than 250. Okay, so I uh, hooked up my ink bird and uh, currently monitoring the temperature. Let me go to graph here. Um, so right here, I have a high of 275, so alert me to get over 275, and I got another low temperature of 210, so it gets down below 210. I need to do something else. So right now it's at 255, which is a little over my goal weight, but uh, I'm okay. Uh, 225 to 250, so uh, gonna get that to come down a little bit more. I've already uh, adjusted the knob. I turned it down to just a little bit. And we make incremental adjustments until that wait about 20 minutes. So it's only been, it's been about 15 minutes since my last adjustment. So uh, I'm about to make another adjustment slightly down to get that temperature down a little bit more. Temp is at 250 right now. There's, you see that? 250. Spritz in every 45 minutes. All right, be back in another 45 minutes, and I'll check on the color. All right, so it has been two hours. You see the ribs right there? They look, they look getting a little brown, but that's that's okay. All right, current temp in the pit right now is 237. That's absolutely perfect. It's been holding temp like a champ. Let's get these things spritzed. A nice color, though. There we go. It's been three hours and it's at 248 right now. So uh, temperature is holding steady at my goal temp. I've only had to adjust this, you know, two, three times at the most. Trying to get a nice brown to it. Looking good. All right, so after three and a half hours, let me show you the settings. The intake 
is down to just, I mean, just a bare smidge right there. And the tip top temp has been adjusting the whole time. And uh, right now it's, it's almost closed and it's running about 250. I think it's getting to like a pretty big log right now in there. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, almost, that's almost closed all the way and it's still maintaining the temperatures of about anywhere between 235 and 250. So it's right in the target area that I want. So, so far, so good. Three and a half hours, you sneak peek at the ribs. Looking good. All right, y'all, so the temp is at 225, my target. The tip top temp has opened up a little bit more, lets more air in there. And I still have the I still have the intake, I mean, just barely cracked open. So the majority of the temperature right now is being controlled with the tip top temp. Let's look at the ribs, spray them, and uh, see how tender they are if I want to maybe wrap them in some paper. They're looking good. Nice mahogany color, it's kind of what you want to see. This, uh, this Dr. Pepper is going to act almost kind of like as a glaze, so I'm not really going to sauce them. Yeah, those look really good. They'll tender it again. They still got a way to go. They're not bending all that good. Look at that. But if they get it much darker than that, I'm going to I'm gonna wrap them with some paper. So right now it's been, uh, it's been about, four, about four and a quarter hours. All right, so it is two o'clock. It's been almost five hours, about 15 minutes, about 12 minutes short of five hours. Tip top temp is opening up and the current temp right now is 228. So still in that, that target temperature I want of 225 to 250, but I want it more around the 225 area. So we're doing pretty good. Let's check on the color and the, uh, and the tenderization, how the ribs are doing. Still got a way to go, man. Things ain't, uh, they're not bending very good. See that? You want them to kind of bend down a lot more than that. You want them to be cracking right here. They're not cracking. Some more Dr. Pepper on there. All right, there we go. So this is gonna be close, because I start off with them uh, partially frozen. This is gonna be close to probably about a six, eight, seven hour cook. All right, y'all, so it has been six hours. Let's take a look. I remember, I, I, I took these from, from basically being frozen to uh, what they are now. So. Still not all that tender. I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap them. I mean, they're they're pretty uh, pretty much uh, dark enough as it is. All right, let's do this thing. All right, one more, one more time. Some of that wood ignited I put in there, but it's all good, it's all good. All right, uh, I'm gonna give it probably about an hour and I think it should be done by another hour. So make it about seven hours from being basically a frozen uh, rib. All right, so while the ribs are finishing up, there might be a question come in. Will the tip top temp fit on the vent without there being an adapter like the can? I believe it could, but you'd have to take this piece right here off. You have to unscrew and take this off. And you could probably lay this on top of the hole and it'll probably work just fine. However, having the can, it's probably easier just to cut the slits in the can and then lay it on top of there like that. I mean, it's working out just fine. And you see the, the vent has closed down because the temperature got to be like in the 268 because I had the, the I had it open for there for quite a while. So now the temps are coming back down and it's uh, sitting there and it keeps open and shutting and controlling everything. So it's a really neat contraption. So does the tip top temp work for the Bronco? Yes, you just have to use it a different way because uh, all right, so cleaning the tip top temp is very simple. Somebody commented in my last video that cleaning these look like to be a pain in the neck. They're not. I just soak them in some hot soapy water. I took a toothbrush this morning and I went over just like the, the, the joints right here um, where everything spins. I cleaned the spring. I flipped it on the other side and basically you just want to clean. This is, this is, the, this is the first model. You just want to clean uh, you know, your hinges right here and clean your spring. And if, if anything can come off of here, you can clean it off, but it comes off fairly easy. Just soap it in some uh, hot soapy water and uh, use a toothbrush. Just let it soak there for a little bit, like while you're preparing your ribs or something. Just uh, just let it soak and uh, clean with a, a toothbrush. Cleans up in just a couple minutes. So very, very simple. No excuses to not use it. It's, uh, it's so simple, it'll make you laugh. Uh, that might be a good uh, saying. So there you go. Tip top tip. All right, y'all, so it's been seven hours. 
Temp is 232. You see the graph right here. It's been kind of maintaining a nice even temperature. So uh, pretty impressed. The only reason it was up here is because that's when I had the lid open whenever I wrapped it, put the ribs back in there, and the temperature came back down and settled. That's pretty damn impressive. I like that. So let's get them off. All right, y'all, so let's cut into these ribs. I waited about 45 minutes, let them rest. Let's see what they look like. All right, y'all, so uh, this is what they look like right here. Take a look at that. Got a nice little smoke ring in there. All right, let's, uh, these things are taste. All right, y'all, let's give this a whirl. Tender, moist, freaking phenomenal. Anyhow, tip top tip with the Oklahoma Joe Bronco, it works. Anyhow, like, subscribe. I'll see you next week. Ciao.